Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on forces in two dimensions. The topic of this video is Newton's second law in forces and angles. And here's the question we wish to answer. How do you analyze situations in which you have an angled force that's causing an object to accelerate horizontally? Something like this. Well, I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discuss vector resolution and vector components. If you need to review the video, there's a link to it in the description section of this one. One thing we discussed in that video was that any vector that at some angle to the traditional horizontal and vertical axes has what we call two parts or components. So this vector here is at some angle theta to the horizontal and vertical axes. And if we wish to find the, the components of this vector, we simply project it onto the axes. So projecting it onto the horizontal axes as such shows us where the AX or horizontal component lies and projecting it onto the Y axis shows where the vertical component lies. Now these two vectors in blue are what we call AX and AY. They are the components of vector A. It's often handy to take the AY vector and to move it over so that it's part of a right triangle. And when we do, we feel more comfortable using right triangle trigonometry to relate the vector A to the vector AX in AY. In this triangle, vector A is what we call the hypotenuse. Vector AX is the side of the triangle that's adjacent to theta, and vector AY is the side that is opposite theta. And given the equations for cosine, sine, and tangent, we can use them to find out what AX is in terms of A and theta. AX is A times the cosine of theta, and AY is A times the sine of theta. And we'll be using these two equations quite regularly throughout this video. When I see a diagram like this, I'm prepared for an easy F net equal MA analysis. What makes it easy is that all the individual forces are either opposite to one another or at right angles to one another. If we were to put some numbers in in place of the symbols, we might have a diagram that looks like this. And in a typical F net equal MA analysis, we have to find out what the net force is. That is, we have to find out what the vector sum of all the forces is, sigma F as some people say. If I look at the horizontal direction, the sum of all the horizontal forces is real easy to compute. It's 60 to the right plus 10 to the left, which adds up to 50 newtons to the right. It's as easy as calling one negative and the other positive. And in the vertical directions, the sum of all the forces is zero newtons. When forces are at right angles and opposite to each other, it's real easy to calculate the net force. When I see a force diagram that looks like this, I get prepared for a more difficult analysis. Things become complicated when a force is at an angle to the traditional x and y axes. But I can simplify matters by using my trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent in order to convert this diagram to a different diagram that shows the components of that angled vector. I can use fx equal f cosine theta and fy equal f sine theta to convert this diagram into that one. Now the difference is I'm replacing the vector that goes at an angle with its parts, fx and fy, and I can easily find the, the magnitude of those parts using these equations that I just discussed. The key to doing these types of analyses centers around the concepts of vector resolution and vector components and the idea of substitution. Substitution is the action of replacing someone or something with another person or thing. We do it all the time in sports. We pull one player out of the game and we replace the player with another player. In this type of problem, we can do substitution. We can pull the f applied in theta out of the game and replace it with fx and fy, something like this. Now once we do that, all the forces are up, down, and left, right, and we said that's an easy problem. So that's the key to analyzing this situation. Now, when you think about the original context here, it was an angled force causing a horizontal acceleration. Since there wasn't any vertical acceleration, we know that the vertical forces balance each other. So when we go to think about net force, we don't worry about the vertical dimension because vertically the force is balanced. In other words, F grav is equal to Fy plus F norm. Now when we worry about the horizontal situation, we consider the fact there's an acceleration, and therefore the sum of the horizontal forces is not zero. We have a net force, and it's calculated by taking the larger fx and subtracting from it the smaller f friction. 
It's time to try an example with some numbers, like this one. A 150 Newton force is applied 30 degrees above the horizontal to accelerate a 20 kilogram object across a level surface. The friction force is 60 Newtons. Determine the acceleration. The free body diagram is drawn for me. My first step is to take this 150 Newtons at 30 degrees and to resolve it into Fx and Fy. So to do so, I need my equations fx equal f times cosine of theta, and fy equal f times the sine of theta. And I substitute in 150 for f and 30 degrees for theta. I end up getting fx equal about 130 newtons and fy equal 75 newtons. Now I can do the substitution. I can replace one player with another player. I'm going to pull the f applied out and the theta out of the problem and put fx and fy in and it looks something like this. Now I have all the forces horizontally and vertically, and I know that's an easy problem. When it comes to the F net, I need to sum the horizontal forces, the 130 to the right and the 60 to the left. And when I sum those, I end up getting 70 newtons to the right. That's the net force. To calculate the acceleration, I simply use Newton's second law, A equal F net over M. The F net is 70 newtons, just calculated it, and the mass is up in the problem, 20 kilograms. 70 divided by 20 kilograms gives me the value of the acceleration, and it comes out to be 3.5 meters per second squared. Now something came up in that last question that I did not address, and if you caught it, it might have bothered you, and it has to do with the normal force. The normal force is simply the force that exists when two surfaces are pressing against each other. If you put a box or object on the floor, and whether it's just at rest or even moving, that box and the floor begin to press upon one another. The weight of the object pulls it downwards, and as it's pulled downwards, it begins to press up on the floor and the floor begins to press up on the object. The two surfaces are pressed together, and the result is there's a force on that object by the floor. We call the force the normal force, and represent it by F normal. Now normally when it comes to normal force, we expect this. The normal force is up, the gravity force is down, and they're of equal strength. And you might be used to this from a portion of a year of physics. But in the problem we just discussed, they weren't the same size. There was a normal force up, but take a look. It's not the same strength as the gravity force down. What's up with that? Well, I'm going to tell you. In this situation, there was no vertical acceleration. So the sum of the vertical forces was zero. We'd say they balance. And if there's only two forces like that, then the F grab is equal to the F normal. But in this situation, there aren't two forces. There are three vertical forces, and when there's three vertical forces, the F norm and the F grab aren't equal to each other. Instead, the one F grab force down is equal to the two forces up. That's how you get vertical forces to balance. So F norm's not equal to F grab. Instead, F norm plus Fy equals F grab. Now that discussion prepares us well for thinking about this question. How do you analyze a situation when the applied force is directed downwards below the horizontal? We've been looking at the angled upwards forces. What about the angled downwards forces? Well, let's talk about the free body diagram. Here's our object represented by the rectangle. Now we have an angled force directed downwards and rightwards to push this object across the horizontal surface. So I'm going to draw that angled force first. That's the applied force. And it has two components. It has the Fx and the Fy components. So I can sketch them in there. And if this were a problem, I'd forget about the applied force at this point and replace it with Fx and Fy. Of course, there's a gravity force. There usually is, and it's down. We're dragging this object to the right, so there's going to be some friction between it and the surface. So there's a friction force, which I'll show to the left. And now it comes to the normal force. So when it comes to normal force, here's how you have to think about it. Always perpendicular to the surface and of sufficient size to provide the support required. Of sufficient size to support the object's weight, that's F grab, and then the downward force that the applied force puts upon this object. So it has to be of sufficient size here to support two downward forces. And so now the normal force is going to be much greater than the gravity force, and you see it there. So when we have this situation, or any situation, in which the object accelerates horizontally, I know that the vertical forces must sum to zero. They must equal zero when you add them up. And if there's three vertical forces, then the F norm and the F grab are not equal to each other.
And in this case, with the two downward forces, the F norm has to be of sufficient size to support those two downwards forces. So we would say F graph plus Fy is equal to F norm. It's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you with that, could I ask you to help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here's three resources. You'll find each one on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a concept builder, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page. Any one of these would make good next steps. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.